So can you tell us a little bit about the research that you've been doing at Rohalloway? I started off really as a marine biologist mm -hmm. and then latterly um, shifted my atten attentions more towards the, the Thames, the River Thames. And most of the research I've done recently in the last decade has been in collaboration with the Natural History Museum. We were initially doing work on these guys. These are Chinese mitten crabs, of which, this is a dried one, of which there are millions in the Thames. Mm -hmm. They're an invasive species. And a part of that work, we were doing some trials with different types of nets in the Thames. And these are fike nets which fish on the riverbed. And the idea was to come up with a design of net that you could use mm -hmm. um, to fish for mitten crabs without getting a big bycatch of fish. And what we found in lots of the nets is rather than lots of fish, there was lots of what we call macro plastics, big plastic items. And it was just so disgusting, we itemised it all wrote it up as a paper, which went, almost went viral. And it drew everybody's attention to the issue of plastics in the Thames. And that became the focus of our work. So you mentioned um, you were finding macro plastics um, mm. in the Thames. So what, what, what are they? Larger items of plastic, the sort of thing we're used to seeing floating around. So, you know, plastic water bottles, plastic bags, mm. food containers, things like that. So they're mm. usually referred to as macro plastics. But what happens to some of those items is that they break down into small and small pieces. And some of those pieces will become what we call microplastics, yeah. which is a term that a lot of people have heard of nowadays. Mm -hmm. And the issue with microplastics is once they become smaller and smaller, they become more available to a wider range of organisms in the Thames. And they can be ingested either deliberately or accidentally. Mm -hmm. And that could present problems. So in your work, are you finding um, evidence of microplastics then within some of these organisms? Yeah, so we've, when we did this work, and when we first presented it, one of the first questions people asked us was, does that mean fish in the Thames eat plastics? Mm. And at the time, we didn't know. So we did a provisional study through, um, uh, initially an undergraduate project with uh, Alex McGowan, who went on to do a master's and then a PhD. Mm. Um, and Alex looked at some of the flatfish, common flatfish in the Thames, which are flounder. Mm. And she found at certain sites in the inner Thames estuary, particularly at Erith and at the South End, that 75% of them definitely have plastics in their guts. So earlier you mentioned that you were catching these mitten crabs as well. Is there evidence of these mitten crabs being affected by microplastics too? A very high proportion of them have got plastics in the guts. In indeed, the mitten crabs, every single individual we've looked at, has got plastics in the gut. And not just that, 90% of them have got not just individual fibers, but great big tangled balls of plastics right. in their equivalent of our stomach. Mm. And I assume that these are not passing out of them then, are they getting trapped within the stomach? Yeah, I think what happens is that the way that the crab's stomach works, because crabs don't have teeth as such, mm. the way they break down their food is that the stomach Act is, is quite muscular and it grinds up the food and because of that activity I think that helps to tangle up the plastic right. so you get these tangled balls mm. which effectively block the stomach and don't pass f further mm. through the gut so the really interesting thing is how long they stay there what mm. impact it has on the crabs and when the crab molts we have some evidence to suggest that actually when it molts, it might get rid of that plastic okay. because it molts the, the front part of the gut. And that's something we're looking at mm -hmm. at the moment. But then perhaps it's putting that back into the Thames. Absolutely, in a nice little package yeah. for something else to pick mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Possibly, we don't know. So we've heard lots in the media about fatbergs mm -hmm. um, and the issue of wet wipes, people flushing these mm -hmm. um, down the toilet, I assume. So yeah. is this something that you're looking into as well? It is. Um, I mean, one of the reasons that wet wipes function as they do mm. and they're durable is most of them or many of them have got plastic fibres woven into them. So yeah. that's why they don't fall apart. That creates a problem in the sewers because mm. they're, they're there for a long time. They don't break down. They trap fat and help contribute towards the fat birds. Mm. Wet wipes, which might be floating around in the water, yeah. start to sink towards the riverbed and they bind up with natural dairy like twigs and branches mm. and they create a meshwork that traps sediment rather than fat in the sewers and it has the same effect it accumulates it accumulates it accumulates and if you go to certain sites on the Thames such as Hammersmith near Hammersmith Bridge 
the, the whole profile of the foreshore is changing mm. because of these so-called wet white reefs just building up and building up and building up. So this is a topic that our students at Royal Holloway are really, really interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually designed a practical this year, didn't we? We took yep. the students down to Hammersmith um, and they actually got to experience the, the, the wet wipes on the beach. Yeah, pretty grim. But, uh, <laughs> but it, I mean, the interesting thing is, you know, what we tried to do, you know, at the college in the department, certainly, is try to inform mm. our teaching by the research we do. And this is a classic example. Mm. So in October, the end of last year, we went down to Hammersmith with, I don't know how many students. 50. 50 yeah. students. <laughs> and, you know, a couple of my students, research students. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing how engaged they were yeah. and, and really quite horrified mm -hmm. at the scale of the problem. Yeah. And they did some sampling, quantitative sampling, mm -hmm. to look at the number of wet wipes that there were and everything else. And in the process, they helped do a sort of mini cleanup yeah. and collected a whole pile of wet yeah. wipes and other unsavory products. Mm -hmm which we took off the beach. So yeah. it was a win-win situation. And the worst thing is that we spent hours down there picking up and collecting these wet wipes and hardly made a dent yeah. um, in, in these wet wipe mounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think from um, Katie McCoy's master's work, when we did some sampling there, I think the highest number of wet wipes we found was something like about 140 per square meter, and that's wow. just in the top five centimeters. Yeah. So there, there are a lot of wet wipes, mm -hmm. and that's just one site in the Thames. So we're talking about how awful things are and the impact that it can have on different species and things. Mm -hmm. But as an individual, how can we reduce, you know, the, the plastic consumption or, you know, the scale? I think one of the keys, key things, is to reduce the number of virgin plastic polymers that need to be produced. Yeah. The first thing is to reduce or refuse the use of plastics. Mm -hmm. So reduce the amount of plastics you use. If there are alternatives to plastics, consider using those. Then the next stage is to actually reuse mm -hmm. plastics. So plastics are a very durable um, group of products. This is why they, they persist so long in the environment. That's when they become a problem. So use that to your benefit. Reuse plastics, repurpose them, use plastic containers for other reasons. Mm -hmm. And even consider repairing mm -hmm. plastics rather than having to purchase new plastic. Mm -hmm. And only after you've gone through those three things, mm -hmm. then consider recycling mm -hmm. and recycle appropriately. Reduce, refuse, then repair, or reuse, then repair, then recycle. And the aim to try and stop the, you know, t turn off the tap of plastics mm -hmm. getting into the environment in the first place. And by trying to redu reduce the need to produce more new plastic. Mm -hmm.